Welcome to this week's episode of Azentuary. We left off last time having slain a bunch of kind of stone-looking golem guys that were watching something in the middle of the room. Now there appears to be copies of Poplart, Barry, and Grimmel around the room in various places. The only one that has not been copied yet is Foxglove, but you did just slay the last of these statues. I'm going to give you guys a moment to kind of collect yourself, ask any questions if you need reminders on anything, and then I'll jump in. Uh, now that reminded me exactly where that, that, uh, um, yeah, reminded me exactly where we were at. Do you girls have anything? Um, no, I'm good. Mm. Alex? Well, I was just having fun uh, appreciating what we've been doing around here. I mean, little mini-me seems pretty awesome. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my little guy. I mean, he seems happy. Mm-hmm. Remind you, psychic damage when you got copied. I mean, he, that wasn't his intention, you know? It's just like a... Uh, it's it's it, you have to crack a few eggs to make an omelet, you know. Like you gotta take a little bit of psychic damage in order to get a newfound friend, and also another addition to my evil army. He can be my commander in chief. Uh, he might also kill you and take your place. You can try. You wouldn't oh. take my place, would you, Mini Me? Anyone who tries hey. to kill me still gets executed, whether they look like me or not. <laughs> All of them just kind of look around the room and then look over at Foxglove and Grimmel too. Uh, kind of waddles over to Foxglove. I'm a back away. I'm a back up. They ain't. I. Okay. They ain't gonna make a copy of me. I'm backing up. As they you back up. <laughs> as you back up. Uh, Grimmel 2 stops for a second, and I need everyone to... Ah, Grimmel 2 speaks some words, and kind of, there's a little flap of wings, and I need you and everyone else to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh boy, our strongest category. Ah. Uh, already failed. Ah. I rolled a three. <laughs> oh, wow. well... Somehow, I was so fascinated by myself that I forgot to actually be wise, and I rolled a nat one. <laughs> Box glove Pop- got an eleven. Poplight's too distracted admiring his mini me, so he got nineteen, <laughs> which is kind of awesome. All right, so there's really nothing bad that happens. You guys all just suddenly become like good acquaintances with your others. You're, you know, you regard them as happy, friendly acquaintances that you've, you know, seen many times before. <laughs> Everyone but Poplart, who has already apparently just done that voluntarily. And <laughs> after that, uh, oh, and yeah, bring up the other sheet. Fox Club, you kind of give a, a smile and stand there as Grimmel again approaches you. Can I try to break out of this trance and leave? What would that be? I believe so. Let me... I I, want to look something up really quick. While Ben's doing that, Poplart shrinks down Mini-Me and puts it into his satchel to carry around. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. Um... As long as I maintain concentration since it's a cantrip, I'm pretty sure I can keep it going indefinitely. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Fox Club, give me a wisdom saving throw. Another one? Oh, boy. Well, you asked. You wanted to try and break it. I have one option yeah. for something that might work. Uh, 16. It didn't work. Dang it. Sorry, I, I had an idea of the mask and stuff, but you you beat it. Uh, 
So from, he, from now on, Ben, you're only allowed to roll ten sided dice. One instead of a well, one. Well, in that three. case, well, sometimes you have to go up, sometimes you have to go down. So that doesn't always work okay, out very well. Okay, all right. I'm just, I'm just saying. All right. So little grandma walks up to you, and let's see. That is a. Oh, that's a well. That's a dirty twenty. So uh, it's the same kind of a slap thing. It does eight bludgeoning damage and six psychic damage, but you see from that kind of the the feather ooze out and extend off, and a second foxglove grows out of the ground. And the strike also breaks you of that charm. Great. Let me uh, put this person in my list here. Oops. All right, I'm just going to put Fox 2. That makes it easier. So Grimmel 2.0 is still doesn't have the satchel anymore, right? The stuff inside? Well, only Grimmel Prime would have it. Grimmel hmm. Prime? That's my new evil overlord name. <laughs> Grimmel Prime. Fair enough. Yeah. Trademarking it, Box, patenting it. Out. It's not your idea anymore. It's mine. <laughs> Okay. Wait a well, minute. So there's... Wait a minute. Hold on. What? Hold on. A sec. Let me back here. Um, so this thing that he, this thing that uh, Grimmel Two did, did he? Was that like a charm that type of thing? Yes. Um, it's we're immune spell. to that. Oh, you are. Yeah, I have the aura of devotion. Uh, oh. Friendly creatures within ten feet of me can't be charmed while I am conscious. Well, they're more than ten. Uh, that works for you. Um, you, Poplart, and I think Gremel Prime, but Foxglove and Gremel 2 were further than that away. They're more, more okay. than 10 feet away. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Poplart charmed Cause... himself. He doesn't worry about that. <laughs> Poplart redefines what it is to be charming. All right. Well, thank goodness for that. Yeah. Okay. So you guys are all, yeah, you're just chilling over there. Okay. Well, now there's so anyway. So Foxglove, you being the one that you just recently came out of this, uh, I don't want to call it a daze. You just no longer see this copy of you as or copy of Gremel as a friendly acquaintance. So what are you gonna do? Uh... Well, I'm gonna feed my mini me sweet rolls. He's already in your bag. Yeah, you already had. We're sharing. And Foxglove, you know that you were charmed by the, the creature. Okay. Well, so it made a second me. Yeah. I don't like second me. Have these things hurt us like our second selves? Have they hurt us yet, or are they just chilling? Except Not for yet. the psychic damage you take when they smack you. That to make a copy. Yeah, they haven't hurt you beyond that. I mean, I can't really sense their intentions like Barry can. Barry doesn't like them, but Barry can like a check of evil. It can't, it can't, it hasn't been around in my turn yet. People keep uh, <laughs> jumping in, so. Well, don't I don't worry, I've got something to like these... There, you know, they'll be chill as long as we're chill. I don't want to fight them in case of that, but. If they end up not being chill, I want to fight when I can. So I'm just going to let Barry do his thing. <laughs> yeah, Barry, check uh, if they're easy. All right. Let's just... All right. Well, well let's, ha let's hand wave until we're at Barry's turn, and let's go there, because that seems like the most appropriate thing to do. Okay. All right, Barry. All right. Yes, hands. Yeah, me... Uh... <laughs> Me open up me divine sense to 
get the feeling of these creatures. Me already have a feeling of what they are, but me just double check. Um, you, I don't remember. Your divine sense just tells you basically if they're like good, neutral, or evil, right? Yeah, e good or evil. Evil. It, it lets me sense evil within sixty feet. Okay. Well, yes, you sense evil all around you then. Perfect. All right. Uh, can I can I do that as a bonus action? It's a spell. I, it's not it, really it's, a spell. No, it's, it's just. Sure. Yeah, you do that as a bonus action. Why not? Okay, all right. Uh, then me take mighty swing at me too with uh, sort of Freya. Oh, and okay. Since, and since they're evil, hopefully they can't see. They're within like 10 feet of me, so. Sure, you draw your sword because you had, yeah, I guess you pull up your sword and um, take a strike. Yes, um, so that is 22 to hit. Well, yeah, that's going to hit. <laughs> oh, ho, he, he, ha, ha. Come with me to the funny farm. All right, that is 12 plus 7. That is 19 damage. Jeez. All right, well, you, so basically, um, you split your, uh, person in in two more or less and it they just kind of become an ooze and there's that slapping sound of like jello on concrete as they fall down and kind of shrink and disintegrate nice poplight looks at like very appalled and slowly backs away Fair enough. All right. Um, oh, wow. Death. Do I get to another attack? Uh, I guess. What, so, let's Who else see. do I attack? I can attack. I don't think I can attack anybody else because I'm not within range. Well, you no. You can move. You can still. You did an attack. You can move and, and strike. So, like, uh, I mean... If you think you can tell the difference between Gremmel and Gremmel 2, you could try to discern which one's which and then well, attack. Gremmel 2 is next to Foxglove and doesn't have any uh, weapons or a bag of holding on him. It's a uh, ring of holding, actually. A ring of holding. Yeah. Should, uh, the, 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 copy looks, the, yeah true, the copy the looks identical. Copy there you go. There's, there's no Bruce. Everything else is mimicked perfectly. Yeah, there's no Bruce. All right. Uh, me me jump over and me take swing at Grimmel too. Okay. All right. That is... Uh, 9 plus 12 is 21 to hit. Well, that... Uh, hit that hits. <laughs> All right. And that is 14 plus 7. That is 21 damage to Grimmel 2. All right. You bury your sword into the side of Grimmel 2. It, there is a, like, a shimmer. And as your sword kind of slides in and then back out, and it doesn't quite break the illusion. You can see it, though. It did damage, and then it, like, reforms. Okay. Um. Yeah, like a sharp knife in jello. Got it. Oh, let's see. It's not a fiend, is it? No, it, it is not. It, okay, just making sure it doesn't uh, react in any... Uh, interesting way to a holy sword going through it. No, it does not. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, I'd say we let's just go down from here. So let's go to Foxglove. All right. Uh, are we like fighting ourselves? 
Or are we saying that's stupid and we're fighting each other's selves? Well, you have you have a choice. You can either stab yourself or you can stab try and stab Grimble too. Because they're both right next to you. See, I'm concerned about myself. My my second self. Because that seems to be quite the threat, possibly, if it's identical. However, I also know from TV shows that it is stupid to try to fight a clone of yourself. But that's the more epic thing, so we're gonna fight myself. <laughs> so we're gonna just stab myself in the face. And by myself, I mean my second self. Yeah, I, I, I got that. Nat 20, baby! <laughs> of course. All right. Well, roll her again. Roll again. Eh. Uh, 19 plus 4, 23. <laughs> Good lord. All right. You don't even need to roll damage. You just, you stab yourself in the face, and you do it in such a way that it, like severs whatever thing that was keeping this tangible and your body just melts to the floor. Uh, uh. Let's go, let's go. All right, I've done my part. You guys can, <laughs> you guys can handle it. Well, uh, the Grimmel that just got hit begins to begins to move and let's see what is what are they gonna do i have an idea i just need to look it up they are going to quickly move to the side and cast a spell that sets out a dazzling array of flashing colored light springing from their hand and I need to see here what that does. Creatures within the cone. Sending order of their current hit points. Okay. That's a weird way to write that. Well, that's an right, act. So I, I don't know about those flashing lights. So basically, uh, it doesn't do anything other than makes a bunch of flashing lights and moves away as far away as it can, which is uh, 20 feet to the due south of your location. Okay. And Poplar. Poplar sees all the combat and just kind of slowly slinks away into the corner to protect Mini-Me. Uh, which corner? I have square room. You going like northeast, northwest? Towards the door from whence we came. All right, basically due north. Hmm. Gotcha. All right, so Pop White uses his movement and goes up. Uh, your water buddy is still hanging out here, and he's kind of confused. He's he's not sure what to do. He saw, you know, Barry strike down the one creature, and then there was the other creature. I guess he just kind of moves towards the south of the room. Uh, doesn't quite clear enough ground, but he just kind of moves down there. And then... Ah! Poplar, your, uh, your, your mini you is down there, and he's kind of shaking his head, and he... Trying to like tap his tap his temples repeatedly, and then like making a sign like feed feed feed. Uh, Poplar gives him more sweet rolls. He shakes his she shakes his head and and reaches out for you. Wow. Pop White shoves the sweet roll back into his hand more. Okay. <laughs> All right. Then here, let's just do a uh, roll me a sleight of hand. Sleight of hand. Da, 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 da. Um, 
Let's see here, just to confirm. That's a 27. All right, yep, you shove it in and knock him back down. And as you knock him back down, you see his hand becomes kind of, like, discorporeal. It, it gets all, like, slimy, and he tries to just, like, barely reach out to touch you like he's melting away. No! mini me All right, then make a... Wisdom save. Seven. <laughs> Eight. So you uh, you take like you take seven psychic damage, but he suddenly comes back to perfect form, looking just like you again. Oh, buddy, you had me scared for a moment. All right, uh, where's that guy? Grimmel, it's you. Am I still charmed? Uh, uh, no, you're within 10 feet of me. So you're not. Yeah, you're safe. Well, you see. He had anything to me. I'm kind of tense. I mean, I mean, Barry just decided that evil. But I'm also evil. There's no room for evil. So I'm not really sure what I should be doing here. I mean, like that. I don't have any problem with anything. They seem like they they, they might like follow off my evil plan. And Barry never did. But so I'm not really heavily attached way. I think I might just like bruise on the head and go to out. Right. Else I'll watch an NFC fit. Okay. If anything, this right, is very this entertaining night. watching yeah. Barry. <laughs> there. All right. Well, Barry, it's back to you then. Um, how far away is uh, Grimmel Two? Uh, about twenty feet due south of you. Okay. Easy, easy for me to get. Um. All yes. right. Uh, me going to chase after him and. Uh, might you swing at him with Sword of Freya and use uh, 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 um, divine, divine Smite? Okay. Damn. Okay. That is again. Tw- Jeez. Well, yeah, that's gonna hit. Alright, 11 slashing damage. And, yeah, a whole more radiant damage. Okay. Did he have, well, did the he same have action to the radiant damage? Again, no reaction to the radiant damage. Uh, but as you, you know, you cut your sword in, you hear there's a scream of pain, and then it passes out the side, and again, the body closes itself back up, but you can see there is, there is damage there. All right. Well, be very much encouraged. I swing. Get again. Yeah, that's, that's stuff you okay. get. Uh, that is a 20, 29 day. Yes, that definitely hits. 
Um, and that is her 11 crashing down. Good lord. I lost you. What did you say? That was how much damage? Uh, another 11 slashing. Oh, okay. I got that. And then you said, All right. good lord. Yeah, them, someone sent me something and it autoplayed and it was obnoxious. Ah. So, anyway. All right, you do that, that. All right, Foxglove. All right, so Bob Lord has two. Are you good on Grim? Is Barry too? No, I killed him. Okay, so it's just Grim and doing yep. this. Yep, it is. Bob Lord seems to like Bob Lord too. So I can help finish, I guess. Rapier to the face! Stab him! Yeah. Did you say 14? Sorry, you guys are having some connection issues. It's dropping connection out on occasion. Yeah, she rolled a 14 to hit. Right on. Uh, it narrowly dodges out of the way. Dang. Well, I'm a, a bonus if Bardic... I did not fail, so I think it worked. <laughs> cool. Uh, who are you giving Bart again? I don't know who wants it. Barry, you seem to be doing a lot of work. I want such an Me. Or, well, Grim will probably by the time we get around. Uh, never know, but to me, can always use Bart. All right, Bart inspiration. It's D10 now. All right. So is that for nice for to hit or? It's to hit. It's to hit. Yeah, that's, yeah. All right, pop alert. Well, I mean, doesn't seem to be a whole heck of a lot going on to get involved with, so pop alert just makes sure his buddy's okay. Okay. Well, seems to be doing well. That's good. Gives him another sweet roll. All right. Well... The uh, the water buddy swoops down and goes for a slam against the uh, little Gremel 2 down there since it's taking its cue from Barry Hitton. And... Yeah, it does two slams. Both of them hit. And that is... Okay, a deadly amount of damage. So... Nice. He, he's down there, and yeah, the body just goes flying and uh, turns into just a gel on the floor. And right then, you hear just a sheer high-pitched scream from the other side of the room, and you realize that it's Poplar. He was looking at his little buddy in his bag, and little buddy just, like, turned to ooze and... Kind of the bottom of the bag with, yeah, unset Jello. <laughs> the horror! The horror! <laughs> Pop like gives uh, the ooze the taste. But it tastes like sulfur. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, so did they all turn into yeah. that tastes like so I'm yes. a harvest Okay I need sulfur for so I'm get this bit assume this is good enough for sulfur It's enough, it's basically sulfur I'm just gonna take it 
Did we cut out again? I mean, I'm not going to say no. Okay. All right. Cool. The sulfur is mine. Or at least the goo that <laughs> the smells goo. like sulfur. And might be sulfur. So I'm going to take it anyways. Even though I might... It, it might how are you be. holding it? Containing it? Um, does anybody got a jar? Um, no. Are you saying that because you don't have one or because you have one and you don't want to give it to me? Why would I tell you? I mean, I guess that's fair. Anyway. Uh, yeah, me don't think me have a jar. I have a piggy bank. Can I put it in the piggy bank? <laughs> <laughs> the ooze? I mean, I guess, yeah. Well, All right. The door is open. In the piggy well, bank it open goes. door help? So, you, okay, you're scooping up the ooze and pouring it in the slot of the piggy bank. Yep. Got it. All right. It, it, it Some of it drips out the nostrils, but you've got it in there. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, me, give, me give Water Buddy a pat on back for uh, his, his timely aid. Uh, you, your hand just kind of passes through. And it's kind of splashes. <laughs> it's splash, 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 splash. Yeah. Splash, I was taking a bath. Ba -ba 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 uh, Foxglove pulls out her lute and, lute and plays like a epic guitar solo. <laughs> a lute solo? Yep. Epic lute solo. Do I roll performance? Sure, why not? Uh, that's that's not good. Um, hang on. Need it. Eleven. <laughs> I mean, it it sounds bad. It, it sounds real bad. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you don't keep up on your practices. Meanwhile, poor Pop White is just staring in horror at his, at his poor dead buddy. Mm-hmm. And no one seems to care. Oh, uh, uh, me walk over to Pop Lart and say, uh, uh, me, me thoughts and prayers are with you, Pop Lart. Sorry for your loss, uh, but I think it's better this way. Thoughts and prayers really take on a different meaning in D and D. Come to think of it, <laughs> yeah, they really do. Well, that was very boring. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have touched that satchel because then we just wasted time. They weren't even really fighting back. Not entertaining at all. You speak for yourself. Me got splitting headache. Well, I am speaking for yourself. Why would I speak for you? Like, am I supposed to speak for you? You've got a mouth. You know how to talk. You can do that yourself. The things you expect out of me, jeez. Looks like you just <laughs> caught literal disease from Poplart. Well, I, I, I don't know. He's like, you speak for yourself. Like, I, I, I do. Like, I, I don't know what you mean. Like, I always speak for myself. Whatever, anyways. <laughs> moving on. All right. Well, there are two doorways. You know, the one on the south side that the, well, other you was going for. And there's one that goes out to the west in the southwest corner. Hmm. Uh, do either door look different from other? Well, let's take a look. Uh, if I 
And my notes. The one on the west appears to be made of iron, and the one to the south appears to be made of stone. Oh boy, more stone doors. It's a lot to well, it's, out of stone. It's, it's, it's the wooden ones that Grimwald seems to be prejudiced against. Yeah, there's just no imagination in wooden doors. I mean, I mean, They're stone door, adorable. nice. Bone door's even better. But what if it's like a nice round wooden door, like a big circle? That just so shows someone who half-assed it. I mean, like, they, they know it's boring and wooden. <laughs> So they try to, like, round it off a little bit and, like, add a little pizzazz, but it doesn't work. It just shows the potential that could have been. Imagine a perfectly square door. You That's people have no squares. sense of taste. What if that one in the shape of a pentagon? That would be better. This wood is not a good material. Very boring. It doesn't really make a statement. I will only accept a wooden door in the form of a dodectrohedron. <laughs> you have to open eight different sides in order to get through it. Yes. <laughs> the most evil door in the world. <laughs> With a big one on the on the face that's pointed towards you. I like it. All right. Do we want to go through the, the stone door or the metal door? Mm. The stone door. All right. Uh, me, me open stone door. All right. You... All right. You push open the stone door and find a room that is about 30 feet north-south before you and it's about oh maybe 50 feet east-west you see as you look across it on the west side there is a door made out of bone in the southwest corner see bone and, door and on the south wall in the southeast corner appears to be a rather horrific looking torture device. Oh! I want to look at the torture device. So Grimmel goes and looks at torture device. Okay. It appears to be a bunch of little clips and cables designed to pluck feathers one at a time and then put some kind of a, like, acid or something into the hole. Is this a hate crime? This feels like a hate crime. What is this? <laughs> Where are we? Uh, we in Evil Dungeon. I mean, what did you expect? Oh yeah, but something that's conveniently specifically for feathers. This is racist. <laughs> this whole place is racist. <laughs> I'm not out of order. You're out of order. All right. Well, I guess we go to uh, me. Uh, uh, me tap on bone door with spear. Okay. Just to make sure no booby traps. Yep. <laughs> well, as you you give it a, a stab with your spear, there's kind of a... You, you notice a little, like, misty spray come out of the handle area. Ah. Ah. Big Brain Berry thwarts the evil traps once again. All right. Uh, let's see here. Nothing but you. Were statues, uh, when we killed statues, did 
did they uh did their clothes disappear i mean they were all like stone but stone clothes no. all right all right never mind no. tell um Uh, does anybody have any extra clothes in packs? No. <laughs> no. Also, no. What are clothes? These things? Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. What What are the odds the Poplite would randomly be carrying around someone's clothes he picked up? Well, pretty good considering you have a bag that has some, like, freshly cleaned and pressed clothes inside. Poplart just goes, you mean these? Oh, yes. Thank you, Poplart. Uh, me take a shirt from Poplart and uh, kind of wad it up. Uh, hold breath. Uh, put clothes and open door. Push. Push open door. Okay. You do that and you feel the, the shirt get kind of like wet and gross feeling in your hand. All right. Uh, does door open? Yes, it opens. All right. Me drop shirt on ground and tell Poplart, Poplart, uh, this shirt is defiled now. Uh, don't pick it up. Don't touch it. I didn't think it was filed in the first place, but okay. Why do you bother telling him not to do things? He very rarely listens, but I guess he not did, did this time. He, he listens. He's just... Uh, very definitely gets words wrong all the time. <laughs> hey, I resemble that remark. <laughs> yes, Poplart, I know you do, but I still like you, uh, now that you are no longer evil. Thanks, buddy. I like being evil, too. <laughs> Alright. So you open the, the door and there's a hallway beyond that goes north-south. So you can go north or south. Uh, me decide to go north. All right. You go north and after just a few feet, you find yourself at a T-junction going east-west. All right. Uh, me go east. All right, you find yourself at a locked iron door. Ah, it's kind of me thought. All right, uh, me go back around to uh, room with the goo, and uh, me check in. The door is locked. It is. All right. We have completed a circle. Congratulations. Well, you know. Uh, helps you know where we go. All right. So me through. And uh, I guess me go south. Uh, you went back into the hallway? Yes. Yes. Me go. Me go back okay. around through through room by ass torture device into hallway that goes north south, and then me decide to go south this time. All right. You go south until it ends, and then you find a. Can I describe? Well, a like rusted iron door, immediately to your to the east of your position. Uh, uh, me tap on rusted iron door with spear. Uh, some flakes of rust fall off. All right. Me try to open iron door. Uh, it protests. It creaks and squeals and it does not want to open, but you're able to slowly push it. And then the room, room beyond becomes revealed to you. It is just full of corpses just completely rotted down to nothing bone chunks and fragments and stuff 
This looks like a trash heap. Oh. Okay. Uh. What if the trash heap has feelings? It's rude to call it a trash heap. That's my job. All right. Um. Trash heap? So loud! Uh, does me notice anything? Uh, does me notice anything else in this room other than corpses? Um, roll an investigation. Uh, me get to 11. It's pretty good for me. All right. You look around and you notice that, let's see. You notice that there appears to be a variety of bones in here, ranging from the bird kind all the way to orc kind. Oh. Why you got to mention bird? <laughs> this seems pleasant. Uh, oh, are there all bones for hollow? Bird. So there are also elf bones and fairy bones? Yes. Why didn't you just say yeah. that then? I see, I gave a range, the extremes, and then everything in between was assumed to be represented. The biggest range would have been orc to fairy, not orc to bird. Uh, never mind Grimmel. Apparently he what is not... Tones of bird genocide. Uh, Grimmel has not had his afternoon nap, so he's a bit cranky right now. Don't take naps. Evil overlords don't take naps. Uh, that must be why they are all cranky all the time. Exactly, it's good. Pinochet it's would open. beg to differ. <laughs> you think what? You say what? I said Pinochet would beg to differ. I, I don't know who that is. <laughs> he was a dictator. Oh, yes. Okay. Ah, uh, Pinochet. Yeah, interesting. All right. Well, this is rather ominous. Uh, makes me think that uh, mayhaps we have died here uh, many times over. Me, me leave cursed place. Or, you know, they did, could just be other people. <laughs> yeah, we're not the only elf, fairy, alkin, and or half-orc in the world. Yes, or but that is... are we? But that is all the bones are. They don't see any giant bones or. He gave a range. <laughs> human bones. There's, human. There's yeah. human bones. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that's. Th that makes it okay. That's they killed some it makes it less. Yeah. It makes it less like this is some kind of weird multiverse thing. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, be, be shrug on, on all that death and me leave. Oh, actually, no. Ah, here we go. Uh, me kneel down and say quick prayer to Freya for all departed souls that were in this room. Uh, you feel a collective sigh. And then uh, me give nod. Me make little sign to Freya, and then me turn around and go back up hallway, uh, back to T Junction, and turn west. Okay. Uh, you go to the west, and then the passageway turns to the south. And as you approach the what appears to be a dead end, you see a large shrine. A large shrine? Yes. Is it in my honor? It appears to just be like... Let's call it a seven-pointed star with a symbol of like a, a chalice. And above that appears to be a variety of animal figurines that appear to be being slaughtered. Ah. It's the loving warmth I love about this place. 
Very cozy. You could almost see yourself setting up a summer home here. All right. Does anyone feel any curiosity? Oh, uh, me open up me to divine sense and see if uh, me feel if this shrine is evil. Oh, it is beaming searchlight evil. Beaming like you, you, you don't even get your divine sense open. You peek a little and you're like, oh, God, that's blindingly evil. OK, uh, let's just leave this place. This place is bad. Okay, well, bad is subjective. Let me feel great evil here. It's Again, subjective. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well... Uh, Foxglove... Well, Foxglove, you suddenly hear that voice come from the mask. And you just hear it say, We must know. Must know what, mister? It is here. What's here? Okay, can you give me a little... I don't... Okay, okay. Let's... Okay, I'm gonna have, like, a little sit-down moment with the voice in the mask. I'm like, okay, listen here, Mr. Mask, sir. You're gonna constantly be using my body and using me to carry out your nefarious plans, which is okay, I guess. I don't mind too much, because, you know, whatever. But... Like, you gotta tell me. Like, you can't just keep me in the dark all the time, you know? Like, especially because if you'll tell me, then I might be like, oh, okay, I know what we have to do. And then you don't have to keep popping in here and telling me what to do all the time. It'd be a lot easier for the both of us, wouldn't it? Roll a wisdom save. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't think he likes that. <laughs> 18, let's go, mother flipper! <laughs> <laughs> you did well. You just hear a grumbling, and you hear this. <laughs> Fine. I'm about to tell you what you needed to do. Give it a drop of blood, and it will tell you where the sword is. You want the opposite of Barry's sword? It is here, and this will tell us where it is. Hmm. I don't think Barry will like that too much gonna say it. We're like, I'm already on shaky terms with Barry. I feel like if I get the evil of his sword, then you got, then you might try to, like, pit me against him, and I don't want to deal with that, like, you know? Why would, why would I pit you against him? He aids in your and my rise in power. The mask, all right, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna take my dagger out, you know, prick my thumb a little bit, and then, you know, drop some blood on the altar. Uh, what right, you, what, as you do... Up? What are you doing? Uh, nothing. Mind your business. All right. Barry, you stumble back because you had opened up your divine sense, and the evil pouring off of this just, like, pushes you away. Like, it is too much evil. Uh, me, me draw a sword of Freya, and, and, uh brandishable uh, to try and shield myself from such evil. It, sh it shields you, but you still step back just because you're like, whoa, that's a lot of evil. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna And in doing... Uh, the blood drops onto the altar, and the drops begin to form, and they make finite lines, and they show you a pathway... First, they show you kind of like a map of the dungeon, like a you are here. And then it shows you a pathway down to a round room. And in that round room, it makes a little seven pointed star of your blood. Cool. All right, uh, guys, I suggest we head this way for no particular reason. Let's go. Can anybody else see this or is it just me? Uh, if they want to look, they could see it. Yeah, me, right. me not going anywhere near that cursed thing. Alright, guys, let's go this way! Alright, so you take the lead. Yep. Alright, so you take everyone on the lead, back up through uh, 
the area where like that golden solid gold dragon creature is and i just figured i'd mention it you take a right and go through kind of the kitchen area and you find uh the kitchen spot where there's the giant suit of armor and you're looking at it and let me make sure i get to the right thing Oh, yeah. So it's like a, a big statue of an armed warrior with a sword drawn. And you're looking at it and you know the thing just told you, like, this is the way to go, but you can't see how to go that way. Huh. So there's a puzzle. All right. Are there any bookshelves around, like bookcases? You know, for a little no. book that you put on? That would have been the easy solution. That would have. Yeah. Alright, so he's unsheathing his weapon. This stat. How unsheathed is it? Uh, let's just call it fully unsheathed. Alright. What happens if I to take the sword that he's holding away from him? Uh, you find that it is movable and... As you, like, lift it, the whole suit seems to swing freely as if it's hinged. Hmm. I'm gonna try to see what happens if I sheath the sword, since he's unsheathing it. What if I say nope and sheath it? Alright, you sheath it, and it seems to, like, lock hard into place. You can't move it. I'm gonna hope that was the correct thing to do. Uh, if not, the mask has no one to be mad at but itself because it didn't tell me everything that I need to do here. Alright. So, that's that. Alright, uh, guys, you want to help me figure out this puzzle? Uh, don't I? Mm. I mean, like, what do I gain if I help you out? And you complain about me doing this exact same thing. I'm right. evil! <laughs> same! We're both evil here! Alright, uh, I'm gonna I'm uh, look up at this thing. Uh, what else is the statue doing now that I've put the sword back? Nothing, it's just stuck there. But like, what pose? Do I have to move the pose? No, no. When you lifted it up, it moved freely, and when you push it back down, it is anchored in place. That's all there is. Did that do anything, or or no? Uh, maybe you should try just pulling on suit of armor. Alright. I pull on the suit of armor, I guess. I don't know. Is the sword up, or is it down? Is it, did you, is it resheathed, or did you unsheath it again? I thought I resheathed it. Well, then you pull on it, and it does nothing. All right, sheath it and then pull on it. Oh, then it moves right out of your way. Okay, what what was in it? Nothing. It, it reveals there's a doorway behind there that is a passage out of the room. Cool. I say we go down that passage. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, you go down to that. Uh, you go down that passage and you find a. Uh, what looks like an old iron doorway completely covered in mold. Like, it just hasn't been used in a long time. Yuck. Mask, you owe me for this one. You know, Mask, can't you, like, give me a spa day or something? Like, come on. I feel like you owe me something here, but all right. All right. All right. I'm gonna try to push the door open through the mold. Gagging. Yep, you push it open, right. and it, like, it smells awful, but you push it open and you find yourself in a, a large room that you've been in before. You recognize it and you realize that you walked here not that long ago. You continue, you lead your party down to the south and then into the room where actually you met your watery friend. Why didn't the mask say anything when we were if this was the correct direction to go? Did I just yeah. totally like go in a completely Maybe different direction? <laughs> mask did not know at that time. Well, some omniscient mask. I mean, Jesus. 
All right. It's not. I'm a. I'm a look. Right. Is this the correct place according to the map? No, this is just a stopping point. I figured I'd mention it so you could kind of know where you're at. Okay, onward. Awesome. All right, you go into the next room over where you killed the one dude, and then turn south. All right. Three. Make sure I get the right thing here. Okay, here it is. This was the room that was heavily fortified. There's a locked iron door before you. It's locked? Yes. All right. I don't think I have any lock picks. Uh, Poplart does. Yeah. Poplart, do you want to get rid of this lock, make it open? With your little picks of iron, steel, metal, whatever. Iron, metal, steel, whatever. <laughs> They're very confusing. Can do. <laughs> All right. I don't even know why I'm using guidance on myself, but... 24. Yeah, you do great. You pop it right open. And you open the door to a round room that... Let's see. Has the... Kind of the the eff done an effigy, uh, the tile work representation of a sword on it, and some other things scribbled around the outside. Cool. Can I try to interpret what the scribbles are saying about said sword? Uh, sure. Roll. I guess what would that be? some kind of insight or investigation. Uh, I'm not even sure what to tell you to roll here. Jeez. <laughs> Am How about an intelligence check? Oh, boy. You know what? My intelligence ain't that bad. Okay. 18. Okay. Yeah, you look at it, and it, it makes a lot of sense to you, actually. What it's telling you is that... Basically, it's like a sword in a stone type of situation. You have to go get another thing, bring it here, and then that'll reveal the sword. And the thing appears to be to the east. Alright, to the east, everybody! We're going back. <laughs> My feet are killing me. Too bad. You can go some other way. I'm doing this. <laughs> you know, you know, yeah, you can fly. Well, but that's tiring too. Then my arms, then my wings will be killing me. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. So we are running off to east, huh? Yep. Yes, where you find a bone door. Look, it's your favorite, Grimmel. A bone door. Anything but... Alright, I'm gonna open it. Alright. You throw the door open, seeing a couple of weird little... like, spiny creatures go... running off into the corner and staring at you. The room is 30 feet wide and about 70 feet north-south with a floor covered in square tiles alternating black and white. And there's something written on the far east wall that you can't quite make out from here. But you do hear those, like the scurrying of at least two, maybe four creatures up towards the north end of the room. And there appears to be some kind of a doorway just out of your vision in the southeast corner heading south. Alright, well, I don't want to really walk into the room with the creepy crawlies that I don't really know, but I'm going to walk into the room. I got 
night vision, dark vision. Like, I got this. I'm gonna go and try to see what's written. All right. You go in and you see it says, when the eldest gate opens, the throne of mercy shall be found. Great. Why do riddles have to be so cryptic? Yeah, I know, right? Hey, hey, yo, Mask, you're the one who wants this. Can you help me out just a little bit? You you know I'm oh. not smart. You, hear, you just hear him say, keep going. <laughs> so as, as you uh, say that, a ball of fire slams into the wall next to you, and then another one hits you dead on and it burns severely you f start screaming as you take uh 10 fire damage great the heck hit me <laughs> as you turn and look you can see there's some kind of spiny creature in the north side of the room. There's two of them, actually. And each one of them appears to have grabbed some kind of flame and chucked it at you. Ow. Well, that was painful. Alright, the question Do I just leave the room, or do I kill these guys? Alright, what do you think? I'm a installment party. They threw fire at us. No. Nope. Which direction? Right, right, you. <laughs> Which direction do you have to go? Um, I uh, some cryptic thing. I don't know. Did like don't me a different place here, or did I just get here and all there is is the cryptic? No, message? there's there's another. There's a door. Right through the door. Then. Um, are the creatures blocking? The creatures are to the north of the door, and. The creatures are to the north of the door and just were throwing the fireballs down. Uh, we probably should probably take care of... The door is locked. Oh, yes, we should probably take care of creatures first. Then. Okay, fine. So, like, are they on the... On the ceiling? Oh, they're they're uh, on the ground. Right. They look like goblins. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna stab him. Just go up to the nut near this one and rapier. Alright, you charge at one and you stab at him. 21. Jeez, yeah, that hits. Ah. Only six. Bill. All right. All right. Uh, uh, everyone else, are you? If you're gonna go in and charge these guys, I'm just gonna have you roll, roll initiative. Okay. Me roll, roll initiative. <laughs> me get two. No, it's not two. It's two. Plus All right. Something. Grimmel gets seven. Uh, me plus two. Uh, uh. Let me count. One. Two, yep. four. Yeah, me get four. All right, you got four. And Poplart? Uh, 23. Good lord. Well, Fox Club already went, so I guess you go next. <laughs> well, uh, Poplart does his thing of shrinking down and hiding behind Barry on his shoulder. The most okay. ab astute use of his ability to always, almost always come first in combat. <laughs> you got it. All right. Well, then uh, that first one that, uh, oh, no, sorry. The first one did not get stabbed, runs over and whips around and uses its tail first. To try to hit Foxglove for the 12 to hit. 
it's not. Cool. And then it whips itself back in a frenzy and uses its two claws and slashes each direction. Uh, ooh, I got the first claw was a 25 to hit, and the next one was a 23. Those both believe it or not. Yeah. I, I was, I believe it. So let me, uh, roll some damage there. What if I was like, nope, they don't hit. That would be shocking. Oh, okay. Uh, so the first, the first one is four damage and the next one is six damage. All right. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, your water buddy comes rushing into the room and crosses. Can he? Let me see how fast he moves. He can't quite get over to him in time. He's too far away, but he moves his full. Uh, oh, actually, he can dash. So he dash actions up and he just he's going to just like envelop this guy, the one that hit you. All right. So that guy is is just completely surrounded and then the next one, the one that you had damaged, he's going to start hitting back. He'll first give you a couple of claws. The first is a 15 to hit with his yeah. tail, or his claw, sorry. That was a hit. All right, well, the first hit then is for yeah. seven damage, and then, and then a 23 to hit for another That's seven good, yeah. damage, and then he spins around with his tail. Oh, that one hits two and causes another, well, seven damage. Jeez, that's not creative. <laughs> so that is 20 damage in total. Oh, I'm down to yes, 22 it is. damage. Awesome. Well, that's Grimmel. <laughs> All right, Grimmel, you got both of them right up there next to Fox Club, but one of them is surrounded by water. All right, all the one that's not surrounded by water, cast Eldritch Blast, just to make sure it doesn't completely... That's a 12 plus 9, nine spell bonus. One. Jesus, so that hits. <laughs> I'd say. Not there yet. So, is 2 plus my Charisma. Question. So the invocation yes. says that I add my charisma specifically. It would probably be your charisma, so I'm assuming plus five. So, but no proficiency yeah. bonus on yeah. that. Okay, so it's 14. All right, so you blast him for 14, and really quick, can you give me a, just roll me a 1d20 and tell me what you get? D20. Nine. Nine. Okay, so I need to roll, what do we got here? One, two, three, eight of them. So I need a 1d8. Really quick. Four. Um, the guy that's that all of a sudden got inside uh, the water also suddenly looks down at his hands and s starts to panic. It looks like he's trying to rip his own hands off. Well, that's gonna be. All right. So. Barry, it's you. All right. Uh, me, uh, me, and an attack creature that is not developed. Me take mighty swing with Freya. Sort of Freya. Then it will be a two hit. Jeez. Well, yeah, that hits. Oh, 
That is uh, 17 slashing damage. Jeez. All right. Oh, that is. That's you want to hit him again? Very nearly a net. <laughs> oh, yes. That took a 31 to hit. Oh, good lord. Is uh, there 12 flashing damage? He's uh, this guy got severely damaged. Um, he is wow, yeah, he is he's very, very injured. Uh, well, that repays him. All right, that can cut the blow that he uh, fucks. Fair enough. All right. Well, Fox Love, it is you. Kidoki. Uh, don't I have to make a wisdom saving throw? Because combat. Oh yes, you should. Yes. <laughs> That's a nat the negative. I'll see you guys. <laughs> well, all right. You, uh, yeah, you absolutely just like go red and you go for this creature dope all right rape here i'm guessing is that the uh, i would say so with advantage on this guy uh well the first one the 19 plus one think i need the advantage Unless you roll a 20. No, I, I Unless think I you're roll good. a 20. Nope, another 19. <laughs> and I won D8. 5 plus 2. 7 damage. Alright. Well, you bury in for 7 damage. And uh, there's like something that it causes in them this like this fear and they. Yeah, he is absolutely terrified. Like the blade slides in and then out, and you see this the the eyes just like shimmer as he like shrinks in terror. And uh, it's Poplar, let's uh, let's see what you do. Well, is Poplar still hidden on Barry's shoulder? Be able to pop he... off a shot. As far as I know, yeah. All right, pop, pop, pop. Uh, twenty-six to hit. Uh, which creature? Yeah, you hit. The one that's shrinking down, in terror. Poplight wants to deliver the coup de gras. Uh. Okay. And then, oh. Uh, that's 31 damage. Good lord. Yeah, you delivered it. He is dead. Then Poplite snickers and hides back behind Barry's cape again. Just, <laughs> Excellent. just imagine Barry is kind of like the predator who just has like this plasma cannon on his shoulder perpetually. Auto targets. <laughs> Yeah, well, that that makes sense. We kind of look like Predator. Except that... We're looking. Imagine the horror if Popoid ever got multi-attack. But no, he's a one and done. Alright. Well, the... DC 14, I gotta roll this guy who's enveloped. He fails. And he takes 14 damage just for existing. <laughs> he he's slowly drowning. Yeah, and in fact, now I gotta I'm just gonna let's see here. Grab that, grab that. Oh, yep. And yep, that's gonna hurt him a lot. That's a 2d8 plus 4 bludgeoning, so... 
he takes eight and then another team 24 total damage from the water buddy ouch yep who then like is making kind of a donut shaped things so he so basically the guy can be struck so grimmel it's you Right, well. So he's basically near death, right? Uh, not necessarily near death, but he's just got the crap kicked out of him. <laughs> this will be funny. Uh, I'll just kind of walk toward him and poke him with the my shiny rock dagger that I placed with. Okay. <laughs> He's the, the poor guy's already dying. I'm just the poor guy's already dying. I'm just gonna make him have a weird ass trip. Of... You want me to roll the hit? <laughs> uh, no. I'm gonna give this one to you. He's fully restrained. Uh, yeah. You just you just do the damage and um. Yeah, he the dude just like goes out in a world of personal terror as he slowly drowns and then falls out of the backside of the water, dude. Nice. <laughs> because it was about the worst thing I could imagine. All right. Well, that that is yeah, you the room is yours. <laughs> cool. Poplar, we need you to destroy another lock. Debra, Cadabra! That didn't really work. I mean, the lock glowing chartreuse right now. He did a little fairy fire on it. Ah. Alright. Wow! That's a 23 to lockpick. Alright, you pop it open. There's a hallway beyond. Alright, onward, my companions. And by companions, I mean people I work with. Which is kind of literal definition, me think. Well... You walk a bit to the south and then loop around back to the north and you find that you are looking at a what looks like a piece of tile kind of leaned against the wall. It's kind of an odd shape, um, somewhat erratic, but it looks almost like it's been perfectly carved to fit into a spot of similar size and shape. Uh, mayhap that looked like some kind of key. Do any of us have a key? No, the tile, you like to pick it up. Uh, and take it with okay. you. Pick it up, I'll pick it up. Okay, you have picked it up. <laughs> Alright, I guess we'll take it with us. Let's go. <laughs> Alright. Well, you walk back around, out of there, into the room. Um, I assume you walk back into the round room? Yes. Okay. Well, you are there. Alright. Does it look like I can use this tile on anything? Well, roll to investigate. Thirteen. Search the room. Does anyone want to assist with that? 
uh, me can pry, but, you know, me not to have real good luck with investigation. But, you know, maybe when me adventuring days are done, uh, me can open a private detective agency. Oh, me gets 17. <laughs> You're like, hey, uh, is that it over there? I go to over there. Yes, you find that the hole matches your uh, thing perfectly. Like, it'll just drop right in. Impressive. Do you choose to drop it in, though, or not? I will stick it in. The thing Barry never gets to do. Let's go. Awesome. You kind of smile and slowly slide it in in front of Barry. Just like you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that supposed to mean something, Foxglove? Why are, you looking, what, why are you looking at me as you are putting tile in place? Reason. You're reading too much into it, am I? Awesome. Well, you do that. And the middle part of the room kind of folds away down to the side and uh, it reveals a sword basically encased uh, like a sword in the stone but on its side and like it's waiting for someone maybe this is me I'm gonna pick it up <laughs> alright you grab it and it feels good. That's not ominous at all. Like it, it, it feels like it belongs. It, how can I put this? It feels like it is light and has the finesse of a rapier despite being larger and of what an obviously sturdier construction. Cool. It's mine now. <laughs> Does this thing make Barry blind if he looks at it? <laughs> uh, it doesn't make him it doesn't make him blind, but he finds that he as he tries to look at it, it's like it's a it's like it's made of Vanta black. Nice. <laughs> Get a taste of your own medicine, Barry. <laughs> anyway, I'm a pocket that. All right, we can go wherever now. <laughs> well, you have doors leaving this room to the south and to the west. All right, guys, uh, which direction you want to go? Because I don't care no more. I got what I came here for. Uh, fastest way out of this place. Yeah, I agree with that. All right. So we in room, door south and north, huh? No, south and west. You came Sorry. from the north. South and west. And uh, for just notation, Fox, go ahead and write that down as a standard 1d8 plus 1 rapier. And then it's got, you know, magical effects that we'll figure out later. We love a mystery. <laughs> I'm marking it as evil rapier. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Uh, me take point out of uh, pouch and and flip it. Heads we go. Uh, heads we go south. Uh, tails we go west. Uh, we go west. All right. You kick the door open to the west and begin to walk. It takes you to a T-junction. 
as you turn to the basically it you walk through and then the hallway turns to the south and you're at a T junction that goes east west. The horror. I don't know the way the way you said T junction sounded so threatening. I thought I'd just like humor you, you know, but like that's where all oh, the yes. tea gathers together. Ah, ah. T junctions aren't really all that scary. Um. So. All right. Here we go, east or west. Does anybody have an opinion? No. We're kind of moving blind here anyways. All right. Odds we go east, even as we go west. Odds. East. All right. You go to the east. All right. The... Hallway comes to an end, and you have to turn to the south. There is a sarcophagus upright. Something tells me if we walk into the room with the sarcophagus, that thing is gonna pop out like a draugr from Skyrim. Well, yo. Yeah. What is Skyrim? Give you, chance, give you a chance to try your uh, sword. I guess, but I'm also really low on health. <laughs> Grimmel, you want to knock on sarcophagus and see if anything answers? You know I do. I'll strut on over the sarcophagus and give it a little knock. Maybe somebody wants to join my evil army. Uh, hey, you give it a knock and I guess you hear a faint moan from within. Excuse me, can you open your sarcophagus door? I didn't see a no soliciting sign, so... <laughs> I have a contract for you to sign if you're interested in switching dictators. You hear just kind of a... Uh... Take that as a maybe. Okay, anyways. We could just move past before this guy starts not being so pleased with us. No, 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 I think I can break through to him. <laughs> Alright, uh, Fox Club is gonna slowly start creeping into the room and away. So you, like, cracked the sarcophagus open and went inside? No, there's no room, sweetie. It's just a sarcophagus kind of at the end of the hall. I thought it was a room. So maybe you just edging back the way we came? Yeah, like, whatever other way we haven't gone yet, you know, just leave Grimmel to it. You know what? I'm just gonna leave this here. I kind of like slide the contract under the door of the sarcophagus. You know, like like those really annoying like brochure on your doorstep. And just I just kind of like slide it into the sarcophagus. Like here you go. If you find that life isn't really treating you great, you want to change a pace, a change of lifestyle, perhaps. Um, How are you gonna just... get the contract? You know what? You can keep it. It's fine. <laughs> But just like just just so he knows kind of what our program's about and see if he's interested. Uh, we can finalize paperwork later, you know. I'll just kind of slide that under and walk away. All right. You walk away. So what? Do you guys go the other direction now? You go to the west. We must. Yes. All right. So you walk down to the west and you find a stone door and just for fun, I want to see something. Eh. Sure. Right as you get there and you're looking at the door, you hear the sarcophagus lid open and you hear Dental? <laughs> Why, yes, my good sir. As you can see, if you decide to sign in with my program and join my evil army, we do provide dental, which I, I'm very aware of that, like, most people don't have in this day and age. I mean, yeah, I was getting to it, leaving. <laughs> Use promo code and... Zeratan to, to join our program today. 
I mean, we have pancake breakfasts every once in a while, once in a millennia, you know. We have pancake breakfasts. Um, but, like, you can join Battle Conquest and making all those fond memories along the way to my dictatorship. What do you say? <laughs> uh, give me a persuasion roll, just for fun. You get to do it at advantage, by the way. At advantage, thank god. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, 24. He, you see this guy come hobbling out and with a big grin comes down with your contract and you see that it's even already been signed on the line. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you, good sir. You will not regret it. I'll come back to collect you in a couple of years. Until then, feel free to train up, live your best life until... You get to my program, and then you can live another best life, you know? Safe travels. I'll see you, I'll see you in a few years, all right? He, you hear a... And then he turns and walks back down through the doorway at the end of the hall. Uh, what doorway? There was just a sarcophagus. Uh, through, the, through the sarcophagus, which is acting as a door. He closes himself up inside. As you do, you hear kind of a faint, good teeth. <laughs> See, this is why we provide benefits. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he probably won't be as happy when he learns what the benefits of dental are that we provide, but, you know, it's better than what he's got now. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. With that good news, let's continue through the stone door. <laughs> Alrighty. You continue down through the stone door. What do we have in here? Uh, ah. A chest full of treasure <laughs> and nothing else. <laughs> Actually, it's a. It is a 30-foot square room with a doorway on the southeast corner, and the entire floor is covered in, like, six-inch deep layer of rotting straw. Like, as in hay? No, straw. Oat straw. It's different from hay. Hay is, like, you know, something with nutritional value. You can feed the sheep that they can ruminate, whereas straw has already had the seed removed, and it's just like a shaft. All right. Straw is used as bedding. Ugh, it smelled bad. Well, I could say the same thing about you, Barry, but you don't see me pointing that all of the time. Hey, me take baths. Would you say this smell is the last straw? Ha 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 ha. Uh, hey, dude, me not get puns. The puns get you. All right. Uh, Fox Glove apparently continues on. Yeah. Pretty walks through a very moldy doorway. Like, <laughs> whatever. Fair enough. All right. You walk down through that, uh, that lower space. Uh, through the lower doorway. And see here ah it goes down a short hall of about 10 feet and then there is a a very stuck bone door you say nothing that some good old brute force can't fix i'm gonna slam into the door slam right. my body into the door trying to open this thing give me a strength check all right 15. Eh, yeah, I'll give you that one. You snap that chunk of bone and send it flying open. You startle a very surprised looking creature inside. He, uh, let me see. 
looks like a uh, kind of a armored medium humanoid. Uh, very shocked, very youthful. He's rising up from being at the side of a pool in the northwest corner of the room. Hmm. Does he seem hostile? Hostile? Uh, yes. He points at you very menacingly. That does seem hostile. Alright. Give, give me a sec. You look like you belong to Thundercat Clan. What's that? I don't know. They, they're weird. Uh, they like to run around and go Thunder, Thunder, Thundercats, ho. That does sound weird. Why are these Thundercats disparaging the hoes? Uh, I don't know. Maybe they don't like to garden. That's very strange. All right, I'm supposed do... to make sense. All right, I'm gonna just pull out my loot and play solo performance. <laughs> okay. Do I use per performance bonus or spell casting bonus? Uh, it should be your performance bonus. Okay, uh, twenty-seven. Jesus. By the way, if it was uh if it was spell bonus, it would have been twenty six, so you know. <laughs> well, yeah, he he fails completely. Alright, cool. Uh we can just walk on by now. <laughs> He's just staring at you mouth agape, like, okay, hi. <laughs> All right, guys, let's walk on through. <laughs> right, uh, where is other door? Grimmel, do you want him for your evil army? Nah, I, I have can. Quota. I can make him sign a contract. I can literally just make him sign a contract right now. <laughs> nah, hit my quota. Uh, he he looked like he might be useful. You can take him with you. Yeah, he's he, very buff. He can. He can be your personal bodyguard. Oh, fine. Make him sign. <laughs> Take a contract from Grimmel and say, hey, sign this. Nice. As he's signing, your water buddy goes over to the pool and, like, sucks some water out of it. And you see him, like, shimmer and glow a bit. Oh, nice pool. Nice. See, it's so great that I can use these now because we're not facing undead anymore because undead can't be charmed. <laughs> but now I can charm everything. <laughs> All right, he's going to sign it and I'm going to say, thanks, dude, and we're going to leave. Just leave him there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> sure, you, uh, you leave him there. Yep. He'll break out of it after like eight hours. Oh, jeez. He'll be fine. <laughs> unless he gets, like, unless, like, a bug bites him, then he gets a chance to break out of it, but, you know, <laughs> we'll be long gone by then. Very nice. All right. Well, I guess you go out that other door in the north side of the room, uh, which... <laughs> so you go in, and you go up, and it just turns. There's an archway... That leads you into something that looks particularly peculiar. It's a about 30 by 30 room that has probably, I don't know, let's call it like 15 what you would recognize as a kobold, but each one of them is inside a little cage, like uh, kind of like the fairy cages that you saw way up in another part of the, this place. And they're all in there, like, scratching at the doors, trying to get out. 
Well, I feel the need to release these things. Uh, Fobolds are not very nice. They might attack us after we let them go. But if they're intelligent enough, they'll understand we're trying to help them and then they won't attack us. Yeah, you can ask. Uh, is there another way out of this room? Ah, yes. There... Make sure I get to the right thing. On the north west corner facing north you see a no information so we'll call this a bone door heading to the north all right well i i feel bad leaving these things in these cages because they're probably just gonna die you can probably talk to them i think they probably speak common uh okay I'm gonna try to talk to them. Hey, yo, you guys want out? But if we let you out, uh, we're gonna, uh, if you, uh, the, the, Leave us alone? Yeah, if you attack us, you're gonna die real quick. Uh, so, do you want out, yes or no? Ooh. Yes, yes, out, out, yes, out, out. All right, they Thanks want out. Me. I'm gonna start slicing open these locks, because I don't got no lock picks. All right. Uh, roll me a quick perception check. Perception. Jesus, I keep rolling 19s. That's a 27. Holy crap. Uh, as you go to start cutting the lock, you notice that he is licking his chops. Never mind. I'm not letting you. You all can die in your cages. Let's go, guys. <laughs> Well, that was quite the turnaround, but I don't care. Yeah, I was turning on a dime. Jeez. They... That's... It's their own fault. (laughs) Well, if he was just thinking of his grandma's cooking. (laughs) Nah. DM our our god, DM unquestionable holy being, uh, would not have made me make a perception check just to know that he's thinking about his grandma's cooking. This is true. That, that, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> what a what a point of divine clarity you had. <laughs> All right. Uh, are, are these cages Fox like? Love heard the fate. Heard the voice of God that day. <laughs> are they hanging from ceiling like on chain on chains? Ah, uh, they're mostly stacked. That's not near as much fun. Question, how how laced is my weapon that has, like, the fairy dust on it? Uh, probably not um, fairy, well, you have... fairy you have somebody with it. Yeah, yeah but, like... you've used it. Okay, that's it. All right. No fairy dust in their faces. I don't, ha- I don't have any left. I've already used it for a couple things. I didn't have that much to uh, begin with. Poplart, uh, these kobolds seem very hungry. Uh, maybe you could give them a sweet roll. How about no? <laughs> Poplight Pop Light just walks off. <laughs> all right. I just kind of give them all the L sign as I walk away. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, you. I guess you walk up through that bone door bone to the door. north. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Well. You find yourself in a kind of a long room. It's about 30 feet north-south and 50 east-west. There is... On the east side, uh, in the northeast corner going east, a... uh, Oh, there's an actually described bone door. So there's a bone door up there that you see. And as you continue to look around the room, you see what looks like a bookcase on the west side down in the southwest corner. Interesting. I want to get out of here, though. Uh, me gonna go look at bookcase. It looks like a bookcase. Yes, are there books on bookcase? 
Uh, there are, or at least there appear to be. Uh, Grimble, you, uh, or Foxglove, can you tell me what these books say? I'll sigh, walk over, and start reading in the most monotone voice all the titles of the books. Just in order. <laughs> the Great Gatsby, written by whatever, it's too smudged, can't read it. Alright, next one. Uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. <laughs> Aardvark Adventures. These all sound boring. Or maybe that's just you. Uh, are there any titles that kind of jump out as being out of the ordinary? Um, maybe an original... You're, uh, you see an original printing of... And then... What is it? And then there was one? I don't remember. Never mind. I was going to make a... I was going to make an Agatha Christie joke. Oh. Got it. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, well, me, uh, kind of, uh, me think the bookcase is awful odd being down in dungeons. So me tries. Ah, you find that it moves very easily. Ah, me open bookcase. But open it, you just moved it. Okay, well, me move me move it away from wall. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you move it away from the wall and you reveal a passage beyond. Oh. How original. Uh, Read. Uh, me decide to go down said passage. This is how we all die. <laughs> I'll follow Barry. <laughs> all right, you go down the passage, which takes you... Uh, to the south until you find a T junction. You have the opportunity to keep going, continue to the south or turn to the west. Let uh, us keep going. Okay, you continue to the south and take a turn to the east. And you find another T-junction. This time, it appears to only go about another 20 feet to the east and then dead ends. And then you can't quite see. There's something to the north on their t on the T-junction going north. Okay. Uh, so me continue to go at east to uh, double check to make sure passage actually ends. And then uh, me. Uh, it does end to the east as you go back and then move to the north. You find what appear you, you're basically you're walking along and you, you think you see the end or maybe something. It's dark. And then all of a sudden you slam into the wall where it was like not just a uh, a dead end, but like a painted dead end to make it look extra annoying, you know, like Looney Tunes style. Ugh. Ouch. Well, that was uncalled for. Somebody has weird sense of humor down here. Somebody has a lot of time on that. Alright, uh, uh, me knock on, me knock on door, or me knock on painted door to see if it sounds hollow or anything. You, you're just hitting your hand on solid stone. Okay. Well, that was a bummer. Yeah. Great. Well, then, uh, me go back way we me came, and then me take uh, passageway west. Alright. You go to the west, and then turn to the north, and you find the ability to keep going straight, or there is a doorway to the west. Um, uh, me try doorway to west. You know, right. the one you emphasized a lot. <laughs> you open the doorway. <laughs> I didn't mean to. I was just saying it. All right, but you open the doorway and it reveals a, a 
30 by 30 room with a shimmering pool in the middle of it. And on the south wall, there is a statue of an ancient lich standing arms open holding a staff. We nope out of this situation. Uh, me going to go do Arcana check on staff. Okay. You are so dumb. Uh, me not touching staff, me just checking. See if maybe we can feel magic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Uh, me get uh, dirty one. Yeah, you you feel no magic here. You don't feel anything here. Just arm is sad numb. loneliness and depression. <laughs> his arm has got a little tight around the elbow, so his fingers went numb. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Even the sleepy tingles would be more magical than what he's feeling. All right. Uh, does anybody else want to check out staff? I'd like to live, thank you. It might be Stour. Alright. We have great. Not great. Fine, I'll check the stat. I'll do Arcana Chaff. Go for it. Aha! Then. I you don't sense any magic. It appears to just be stone. All right, that's lame. Uh, what does Doctor Buddy go shimmering pool in center? You notice that he is avoiding it. Uh, oh, okay. Sounds like we need to avoid it. Well, not to see here. Uh, meet back out of room. I guess me continue going north. Okay. You go north until you hit a T-junction and you can go east-west. Uh, I think me try east. Okay. It goes for about 20 feet, and then it appears to uh, basically get smaller as it goes. So, you know, like Willy Wonka style, you know, hallway where you, you, as you walk down it, you just it shrinks a little bit more, a little bit more until it just ends. Okay, me not really liking this uh, uh, weird. Uh, house type type thing. Someone's mess. You... Pretty much. All right. Me. Uh... Nobody messes with us, yeah. but us. Yeah. Right. Me turn around and me go back. Way. Okay. Uh, you go over there, and you go for, like, 20-some feet, and then the hallway turns to the south. And you see, uh, about 20 feet down from the turn, a painting that is just... It looks like a beautifully done magical mural. There is a male elf standing in the foreground beckoning you it's so well done it's almost like his hand is moving calling you towards him and as your eyes scan beyond you see there's a scantily clad female elf in the background yeah you know, like slave leia outfit lying on a uh blanket in midday sun green grass fruit all around it it looks so real like you could just walk straight into it. Ah. 
Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, me, me, very drawn to this. Uh, reach hand out to touch painting. You find that your hand passes through the surface, almost as if it's a portal. Uh. All right, to take plunge and uh, go through painting. I really walked into that one. So you guys all see Barry, the image of him frolic over and sit down next to this beautiful elven woman and begin to eat grapes and smile and laugh. Am I the only one seeing a problem with this? No, no, I see it too. I'm not into elves, so... So you guys are going to stay in dungeon? This feels like a trap for someone who's always paranoid about evil things. Ain't traps. You know what? I just want to get out of this hole, so I'll go through. <laughs> uh, All right. Fine. So I don't trust us. So Poplar is left all. Uh, uh, uh. Bring it over because this does not seem like a smart thing to do. But well, better to die together the... than alone, I guess. So just poplar through as well. Blood comes and joins. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? We all die together. And that's where we end this week's episode. It's a cliffhanger. I'd like to thank Jim Jones for the inspiration of this ending. But at least we no longer in dungeon. This is this is true. Kind of. Oh, great. Oh my god. Anyway, um <laughs> This is not where I I thought this would go at all. I was just throwing that up as a random thing at the ending that I didn't think would be that attractive. Um Oh. Okay. Well. Okay. Well. Yeah, I well, didn't expect you guys didn't... to jump in. I was just. Yeah. Well, yeah, we've been in this dungeon for quite a long time, so you know, after start to get desperate, you know, the wind, and the sun on your face, the wind in your hair, and able to. Him can heal up. So, eh. yeah, I'm. I'm not sure what we're gonna do from here. This. This. I'm. Oh God. <laughs> I'll figure something out. This has been an Azentuary LLC production. Find us online at A-Z-E-N-T-U-A-R-Y dot com for character bios, merchandise, Patreon, and more. Thank you for listening.